what's poppin my name is richie and today i want to have a little talk about how you can properly prepare for creative 2.0 this video is basically the direct result out of a tweet which i saw recently and that is from hypex where he said that the that fortnite is moving to the unreal engine 5 and that fortnite creative map makers should start learning the unreal engine 5 to get used to modding and stuff like that and also most of place replied to this one where he said that he highly doubts that uh, Creative 2.0 will launch with a ton of Unreal tools and that you rather should start learning a few simple things like terrain editors and some other features and not like completely go out and learn the Unreal Engine 5 by itself. And that's basically what we're going to talk about in this video today. I try to give you guys some few perspectives, uh, some few things which helped me personally in my uh, computer science courses in university to kind of get me through that. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's jump right into it. Okay, before we fully start in, there's one quick answer which I want to give to all the people who ask, and that is if Creative 2.0 will be available for mobile, console, whatever. And the answer to that is this right here. Cool. Um, Extra some five asked, can you mod in any platform? And if so, do you need a third party app? Uh, so the 100% the goal is just like everything in Fortnite Creative inside of Fortnite, that everything you create works on every platform and you can publish and, and see it live on every platform. Um, which is why it was important to even demo the you know Windows and console together just to to to, to show that, um, you know the third party tool is the Unreal Editor. So you know it, it'll be you know a, a flavor of the Unreal Editor for sure with with custom things for our tool set like you saw the upload button. But um, you will be able to use you know external third party tools like Maya and Max and Houdini and um, you know in terms of creating content. So that's that's true. Yes. So as you can see, they tried to make it possible for everybody. So if you're a mobile switch you will probably have some kind of version of Creative 2.0 if it will launch with all the features that are possible for PC. I don't know yet, but uh, they obviously try as everything in Fortnite to make it possible for everybody to use it. Okay, so let's start in. First and most important, I know that not everybody has the same background and not everybody can just jump into the Unreal Engine and start learning everything. Uh, so that's why this video is specifically for everybody and not like, just people that are on PC or whatever. So some people do not have a laptop or their laptop cannot run the Unreal Engine 5. So I tried to make this as general as possible, but obviously it is very helpful if you can learn the Unreal Engine and if you have someone that teaches you or if you can teach it yourself. But obviously that is a very tedious task and just learning something like the Unreal Engine 5 is not a thing that you do overnight. It is like a very long process which you have to learn a lot of things. And especially if you're completely new to anything like programming or 3D designing, anything like that, it can be like a very tedious task. We should probably start with the one that is the scariest for most of the people, and that's probably the coding or the programming. And um, of course, you can go out and learn some kind of programming language, and that will definitely be beneficial to you. But the main thing is that Fortnite Creative will not have some kind of programming language that already exists. So it doesn't make much sense to go out and learn Python, C++, whatever, and learn it, and then go into Fortnite Creative 2.0 and see that they do not have this programming language because they already said that they're going to have a, their completely own programming language it will probably be a very easy one uh, to begin with that so learning any kind of programming language will be beneficial but maybe not the most effective so what you should do instead is start learning how a programmer thinks if you go to a computer science class you do not learn specifically how to program a language yes there are courses for programming languages but the main thing you learn in university on computer science courses is that you learn how to solve problems and that should be your main focus if you want to learn how to program in the first place. While it probably will not be completely necessary to learn programming in general, because you probably can just use other tools to kind of skip that programming part like it is right now in Fortnite Creative, um, it will still be beneficial to you if you can learn that and if you understand how stuff like this works. So learning how to solve problems is the main reason why people go to university and why you need a degree or computer science degree to get any job in that kind of field. Because everybody can learn a programming language. It's not that hard to learn a programming language. It probably takes you a few months to learn a programming language. But learning how to solve problems is a little bit of a longer process and something that you can already start doing right now so by the way none of these is sponsored so um, there's a good site which is called brilliant and uh, this site actually I use the same site uh, for my own learning in, in my computer science classes uh, and it's a great site it teaches you very easily how to solve problems how to understand algorithm stuff like that and it's super great website you can have it for free there's like free courses on there there's also premium courses if you want to go a little bit more in debt but uh, in general stuff like this can really help you and benefit you in the long run instead of just learning some kind of programming language so for example if you learn c++ which is the programming language currently used in the unreal engine 4 then it can definitely be beneficial but Learning how to solve problems, how learning how algorithms work is probably more beneficial than just sitting for four months 
and learning some kind of programming language. And the main thing which I think Fortnite Minecraft 2.0 will look like is more like a puzzle piece than it's actually writing down text because I think if they want to have it for uh, mobile controller or whatever then they're probably not gonna have some actual text which you have to write down so it's probably something more like scratch where you kind of have to put in pieces together and then you know this still takes a little bit of learning and a little bit of process but it's probably more like put that piece together and put that piece together and that gives some kind of algorithm or something and yet it's your decision if you fully want to learn C++ or any kind of programming language and it's obviously good but uh, if you really want to like understand how programming works then you probably should more focus on learning how to solve problems, learning how algorithms work and stuff like that. Let's move on to the part of game design which is a little bit closer to Fortnite Creative than uh, the pro game part is and that is actually working within an editor, working uh, with a 3D editor such as Fortnite Creative is one. Uh, Fortnite Creative is probably the easiest level designer that is out there right now. It's super simple to use. Obviously a lot of you guys are already doing Fortnite Creative and you're probably not here to hear that I, I tell you guys to play more Fortnite Creative. That is obviously something a lot of you guys are doing. But it's probably beneficial to if you have never played Fortnite Creative before and just want to start in with Creative 2.0 because you currently don't like Creative normal. It is still beneficial to learn Fortnite Creative because I, I probably think there will be a lot of things which will be translated from Fortnite Creative into uh, Creative 2.0. So that would definitely be beneficial if you have never touched Creative. So if you're one of the persons that just want to start out with Creative 2.0, um, then definitely working already in Fortnite Creative is definitely a huge benefit. Let's assume you want to step up your game, you want to move on from Fortnite Creative, you want to actually work with an editor. So the most obvious thing would obviously be going into the Unreal Editor. Um, the problem with the Unreal Editor is though that it is not the easiest tool by any means. Uh, and it could be quite overwhelming if you just start in, have no prior experience to anything like that. So you never touched Cinema 4D or Blender or something like that before. And um, you just start in and then you completely get overwhelmed. The easiest thing if you actually want to learn something like this is go step by step. So instead of just rushing into it and then just building something out of nowhere, trying to texture it, trying to put uh, some kind of gameplay in it, um, even though the Unreal Engine makes it very easy to do that, it could still be very overwhelming and you could lose motivation before you even start it. Start doing little things one by one. Start, for example, learning how to texture stuff, learning how to how to use materials. So you just put in a simple cube and then you open up the materials menu, put in some knots, put in stuff that looks like a, some kind of material that you put on there and then just start learning by that. And then the next day you build that house and then you texture that house and then I don't know, stuff like that. You just go step by step. It should be a lot easier to learn stuff and then just like go randomly in with no concept whatsoever what you want to do and then just randomly start doing stuff. Also, it's completely possible that you don't have access to the Unreal Engine. For example, your PC cannot run the Unreal Engine or uh, you don't even have a PC in the first place. So if your PC cannot run the Unreal Engine, then uh, I'll try to recommend you guys using Core. By the way, again, not sponsored. Uh, but Core might be a little bit lighter on your PC and so if the Unreal Engine doesn't run on your PC and if, I don't know, for whatever reason you cannot run the Unreal Engine on your PC, then try using Core. Um, it is a lot easier to use, it is a little bit easier to understand. Um, it is obviously not that crazy in terms of uh, customization, but using Core is definitely something that you can try out if your PC cannot run the Unreal Engine uh, or if you don't want to double into directly into the Unreal Engine and want to try something lighter. If you don't even have a PC in the first place, if you are only on a smartphone or if you just console Fortnite Creative, then it is definitely the most beneficial to stick to Fortnite Creative, but also learn stuff about game designing, such as what are the different roles in a game designer. Learning the different roles of a game designer can be very beneficial and will be probably needed uh, in Creative 2.0. While I think it's probably going to be possible to do completely solo trip on Creative 2.0, um, having people that can do different stuff and having people that can do different stuff better than you is definitely beneficial in the long run. Doing all stuff on your own is something very cool, I like to do that as well. It is sometimes easier to just get someone that can do stuff better than you in that certain particular thing. So learning what the different roles are on a game designer, uh, what, it, what different game designers do, uh, is definitely going to be helpful in understanding what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. And obviously the benefit of that is if you understand your weaknesses and your strengths, you can work on those weaknesses and perfect them even before Creative 2.0 comes out. So for example, if level design is your weakness, then you should probably go into Creative and just work on your level design. Don't care about if it looks pretty, just work on the map actually working out and working out good to play. Don't care if it looks beautiful, just use some random blocks and make them so the map actually works and plays out well. 
And if the artistic stuff is your weakness, then maybe just making it look pretty can also work. And that will also take time, but uh, we are all here to learn and uh, make sure nothing grows overnight. It will probably take weeks or even months. But getting prepared into Fortnite Curve 2.0 is probably the best thing that you can do and not get overwhelmed by all the new stuff that we're getting. So with that being said, I'll see you guys back in the next video. Let me know if you enjoyed this one and bye.